today I'm taking a look back at Jake Paul for what he has done this year and uh, most of the parts that I'm looking at are some of the stupid things stupidest things that he says or does and this is one of them so I have an article from the Daily Beast I'm going to read now Jake Paul believes COVID is a hoax and 98% of news is fake well if that's what he believes then he's wrong because He's that type of person who might have voted for Trump this year. And I can guarantee that he did. The popular YouTuber turned boxer spoke with Marlo Stern about his upcoming fight, his coronavirus house parties, green content during the George Floyd protests, and more. It's every day broke with Disney Channel flow with those eight unmistakable words I was thrust into the chaotic world of Jake Paul YouTube star Disney Channel cast off an expiring rapper a friend had sent me the music video from the song titled it's everyday for all along the following question you see this shit I did and down the rabbit hole I went a native of Westlake Ohio post Paul is the younger brother by two years of Logan Paul, who is perhaps best known for the grotesque stunt where, wherein he filmed a corpse at uh, Aroki Gahara, known as Japan's Suicide Forest. and posted to YouTube. Like Big Bro, Paul has amassed millions of followers in mind via viral stunts before bringing his talents to YouTube, where over 20 million people tune, tune in to his antics. An additional 11.8 million tag along with on TikTok. He is the ring leader of Team 10 and influencer collaborate Collaborative and that aforementioned rap quote on rap video has attracted more than 275 million views. But in last year's fall, his name has been synonymous with controversy. First came the neighbors in Los Angeles and Clay, who contemplated filling a class of action lawsuit against him over the pranks, rangers, and other incredibly loud shenanigans at his mansion. Shortly thereafter, Disney and Paul, who shared, who starred on, the, on their series Bizarre Bart Part of Ways, then TZC ran a video of Paul dropping the N-word in a freestyle rap. In 2020 alone, he's been embroiled in a strange hotel altercation with Singh Malik in Los Angeles was accused of partaking in a mall in riot in Scottsdale during the George Floyd protest for black lives. It had the FBI raid his home and confiscated weapons as part of an investigation and drew widespread condemnation, including by the mayor for throwing a massive maskless party at his Calabasas mansion in July while COVID-19 cases were striking across the country. Like his brother, he's also become a highly in-demand boxer, TKOing fellow influencer Deji and Asan Gibb. And this Saturday, November 28th, soaring up again. It's former NBA star Nate Norberson on the undercard of a Mike Tyson vs. Roy Jones showdown. It's his biggest bout to date and may have the groundwork for one day facing his dream opponent, Conor McGregor. I've been fascinated by the influence all while, so I had a match I spoke with a 23 year old.
about his career in various controversies, things got a bit heated. Congrats on the fight coming up. How long have you been training for this thing? Um, I've been in camp since the start of quarantine because when everything went into lockdown, we couldn't go outside and do anything. I was in lockdown with my coach, so we started training every every day. So it's been seven, eight, nine months now. I'm curious why, why you got why you got into boxing. Was it something you always wanted to explore, or what gave you the urge? I grew up playing basketball. All the sports, football, basketball, and wrestling. I was a really big wrestler in high school, and was a state wrestler in Ohio with a really good record. Probably had over 150 wrestling matches, so I always loved combat sports. And when I and I grew up watching UFC and boxing, when I got older, these YouTubers love this shit talk to each other. So when that started happening, we were like, you know what? Let's put some gloves on. For me, it made perfect sense because it took me back to my competitive high school self, and I've fallen in love with boxing over the last three years. I had two fights already, and it's something that's really helped me stay focused on becoming the best version of myself. How do you feel it's made you a better version of yourself? When you're into boxing, when you're boxing, it's the ultimate form of sacrifice. Everything you're doing, you have to be focused. You're on a regimen, training for two times a day, eating the healthiest food possible, and everything about you is completely work in work mode. You're in this stage where you just want to accomplish and defeat everything. So for me, it helped. it's helped me in my life with my mental health, my physical health, and my overall business. Just working on stuff 24 seven in LA, there are so many distractions when I went here. But saying you have to be focused and locked in and put all the Los Angeles partying stuff to the side. I watch your boxing matches from the viewer's standpoint, and it seems like you're trying to prove something out there. Is there a part of you that wanted to prove to people that you were tough and more than a Disney star or a guy who makes fun online videos? 100%. I definitely have a chip on my shoulder. I always have. I always been a massive underdog since I was a kid. Nobody accepted me to succeed, and so I'm definitely finding that that chip on my shoulder, and finally proved that, yo, know, I'm a real boxer, and people have to take me seriously. My goal is to fight Conor McGregor and some of the UFC's biggest fighters in boxing ring. I'm going out there to prove I'm that good that I'm good enough to make those fights happen and I'm good enough to beat those guys. That's where my career and this boxing stuff is going to go for the next three years. How far away are you from a potential McGregor bout? And have there been any primarily talks or whispers about that? There has there been some whispers but you know I had to get two more fights under my belt and prove myself. The beauty of this is that in two fights I'm already one of the biggest pay per view sellers for boxing and Conor Krieger is also on that list. So it eventually makes sense for us to come together and do a fight. It's going to sell massive amounts of pay for you. At the end of the day, this is a business, and at the end of the day, Conor McGregor is a better shit talker than everyone except for me. He is out cheating on his wife and doing all these crazy things, so I think he's going to come out and mean this fight eventually. Speaking of McGregor, I'm sure you've seen one on the recent comments 
my going many whatever she said. These YouTuber girls, these YouTube girls are going to find some Bomber dolls to play with because I'm not the one for chick games. Why do you think of that? You know, it doesn't bother me at the end of the day. He's like, I put four, so he's actually the look at here. And obviously, he just wants attention. He just, he's 50 something years old. He should be in retirement, so. He just wants to get Ellen's and Mitzi by talking about the YouTube kids because we're the ones popping up right now. Hello, Mike Tyson had some very nice things to say about you on Steve O's podcast. He said you looked good in ring and that it took balls for you to go out there, live such little experience, and fight in front of the big audience. I saw that. I saw what Mike said, and it meant a lot to me. It's been an honor to be on Mike Tyson on the undercard in the first place. You can have told the 12 year old Jake Paul, hey, you're going to be fighting on the same card as Mike Tyson, and Lil Wayne is going to be performing. I wouldn't believe you. Lil Wayne was my idol growing up. and. I'm from a small town, and this fight means the world, the world to me. Since Lil Wayne was your idol growing up, how do you feel about his co-op with Trump? Um, you know, I don't want to go down that road. You didn't find that good or disappointing at all? I just don't want to go down that road. Laughs. Okay, fair. So we're being at your point. This guy is right next. He's ducking me and is afraid to fight me. It's apparent. So there's other opponents and bigger names than him that want to fight me. There's Austin McGroom and my brother wants to fight me. He's been calling me out. So there's bigger fights out there than the KSI fight. Does you only fought people of color. I'm curious if you think that there's a racial component to be racial racial component to be to these fights. Pitting you against people of color. No, definitely not. The last guy about Eli Asan Gibb was from the Middle East. So I don't think that has anything you do with it. You know, I've been keeping track of your career for a bit and have read a lot of make- negative reports in the media about you. But of course, I haven't spoken with you before. So I want to unpack the, some of these controversies because I'm curious what your perspective on these things that have happened in your life. One of the things a lot of younger fans remember you for is Bizarre Bark. The Disney Channel series. Why were you fired from that show? Because a piece of uh, in the Hollywood Reporter claimed it was due to the KTLA news segment showing that your neighborhood was up in arms over the noise and disturbances from your home. It's funny because for the last three years, I sort of ran with everyone saying, Oh, he got fired just because. I think it's funny to say, I got fired by Disney, but in reality, it was a neutral decision to split from each other. They weren't paying me enough, and I was making millions more per week than I was on that show, and it was a neutral decision for us to split up. Everyone I worked with on the show was fantastic, but from a business standpoint, it didn't make sense. I was aging up and wanting more money. How much were they paying you? Like paying you some dollar. For most people, they would be good money and all that stuff. But with YouTube, like the merchandising companies and Foxy, even it was sufficient enough. Shortly after that, TNC posted a video of you rapping and using the N word. How do you feel about that incident and the backlash it received? I wouldn't like to comment on that. 
I'm the only thing years received on the backlash for is the incident in the Arizona Mall during the George Floyd protest prior to this interview. <clears throat> I watched the video a number of times and read several reports surrounding the episode. And from my perspective, watching the videos, it looks like people in your crew were both shooting fireworks at the mall and also destroying some stores, windows inside of it. Do you feel con- you conclude yourself appropriately to that situation? Yeah. So none of these people were my friends. I think that is the biggest issue because when people look at it, they think those are my friends when in reality it wasn't. I had nothing to do with them. I was merely a reporter simply like you are in this call wanting to capture, document, and report what was happening. Obviously in hindsight I don't think I should have been there I con- but I'm a content creator and at the time, I was like, "Damn, these people are going to are going fucking apeshit." This is some great content. I want to show this to the world. So that was sort of my mindset of it. But I had nothing to do with any of the people who were breaking stuff down or shooting fireworks off. At the same time, you must realize that due to your popularity and celebrity, when you enter a mall in a situation like that, it's going to be an incitement. It's going to bring more people inside that mall and raise the temperature. Um, that's not my job. My job isn't to control what other people are doing. I'm not anyone's dad. I'm wondering if you can come on this as subsequent. FBI Ray because reports said that they confiscated a number of weapons from your home and seemed to be re- related to the Arizona incident. You're currently under federal investigation. Is that right? Um, yeah, I'm not able to comment on that. Okay, that makes sense. Given that it's an ongoing federal investigation, have you ever had the FBI watching you? I can't say that I have. Are they watching you right now? I'm not sure, man. Is that something that makes you a little paranoid? Nope, not at all. When you're innocent, it feels good. And if they are, they're probably listening to this call. So what's up, FBI? I gotta say, all this stuff over the summer, and it did piss me off a little bit. You were hosting these giant massive parties at your home in Kalamazoo as COVID cases were spiking in the state, and drew a bunch of neighbor complaints and condemnation from the mayor. And when Insider asked you about it in late July, you said, I personally am not the person who's gonna sit around and not live my life. Do you regret those comments? And are you still living by that mentality? Yeah, I mean, it's time for us to open up. Obviously, it's a controversial subject, but it's time for a nation to open up and go back to home. Do you really think that? Yeah, 100%. These are people losing their jobs. There are small businesses who are going bankrupt. There are millions of people who are employed right now. People are turning into alcohol and drugs to cope with everything that's going on. That's the most judgmental thing to our society. COVID cases are at least less than 1%. And I think the disease is a host. You think the disease is a host? It killed about 260 people so far this year. Uh, yeah, and so has the flu. No, the flu has only killed a fraction of that. And we also have a vaccine for the flu. Okay. The flu kills between 20,000 and 70 people a year, and we have a massive produced vaccine for it. Don't we have a vaccine for COVID? I get 
they're hopeful we will ha- we will soon. It's been proved by the FDA based on early stage trials, but it hasn't been introduced to the market yet. So they're hopeful that there will be a vaccine out very soon. Also, distribution poses as a big problem, but I want to talk about why you think COVID is a hoax. I don't have to elaborate. And then there's two. And there, and then there's a quote right there, which says that that you know what I already read. You don't want to elaborate on that. Deep sigh. No. So I guess it stands to reason that if you think it's a host, you still have been throwing these big parties at your house. Uh, no, I've been training for this fight that's coming up. Okay, there are all these naked reports in the media about you, and I'm wondering how you feel about the coverage you received. What do you say to the people who think you are an asshole? I think the media will paint people however they want that person to be painted. I think that until you meet someone in person and get to know them as a human being, you can't listen to what an article says. For example, I on this call, you only asked me about my controversies and the bad things I've done, but you haven't asked me the, about the millions of dollars I raised for kids, all the make of wishes I got, and the millions of kids I've inspired to chase their dreams. You haven't asked me a single thing about that, so you are actually the epitome of what the media is, because obviously bad news travels faster. I only ask you about these controversies in the last six minutes of this interview. We spend the first ten minutes of this interview discussing your boxing skills and how you got to where you are today in the ring. Do you think these things should be off limits for me to ask you? No, I don't think they should should be off limits. I think it's like it's. it's I think it's like. A typical reporter trying to probe an answer out of someone to get a viral article, essentially. Um, and I think if someone up there thinks that they can understand who a person is and what they stand for and know who they are by reading an article about them, then that person is fucking idiot. So you think my questions have, have been unfair to you? No, I never said that. That's no. That is what I'm saying. That that is that is what I'm saying. Your leading questions and so on and so forth, because you want to tell a certain story about me. You got on this call, living agenda of how of exactly how you're going to tell this story. It's a pretty long article to read, so I'm going to skip some of these questions now. To this one, which says, I hear you. I suppose this is why you managed to gunner and dedicate a following because you don't smooth. Yeah, I think people want authenticity. You know, in 2020, there's no one that's authentic anymore, and everyone's just doing shit to be liked by people. I know people who are on that anti COVID thing saying, don't go to parties. You assholes. I can't believe you guys are throwing parties and you're not having any mask. You're putting millions of lives in danger and that same celebrity is at the party the next day. They're just doing that shit to get people to like them. So you're saying you're seeing a lot of virtue signaling among the members of the influencer community. I would say 90% of them are fake as fuck, yeah. I wanted to go back to the pandemic because you mentioned a lot of influencers are being full of shit right now, saying one thing on social media to try and garner sympathy points and them doing another but genuinely. How do you think people should be conducting themselves right now during the pandemic? I think it depends. I think if someone's at risk, they should quarantine. Obviously, the coronavirus has killed 
people. I think if you're at risk, be careful. If you're around people who are at risk, be careful. Quarantine, do everything right, and live in a bubble, essentially. But I think if you're young, healthy, and don't have any health issues, I don't think anything should be different. These kids are losing out on education, but losing, they're missing their graduations, they're missing out on sports. Kids are losing out on scholarships, restaurants, everything. Even this boxing match is something that could be 10 times more legendary and more fun if there was an audience to attend, able to attend. At 100% of our nation is shut down due to the 1% who's at risk. So that's what I meant about how COVID doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't add up. There's something more behind it that the government is not the government's not telling us. And to me, it just sucks because so many kids, kids' lives are being affected by this because we're worried about the one person who are going to die and it sucks. I don't want those people to die and nobody wants them to die. But it's part process of life and shit happens, so I don't know. But one percent I'm going to have to clarify from what Jake Paul is saying in this interview is the thousands and thousands of people who have died every day. So that's So that's where we're at. There are a couple issues here. When young people get this disease, even though they're not dying at the same rate as older people, they're still getting hospitalized, which is then overwhelming for the healthcare system and not providing beds or equipment to older people who seriously need it. They can also give it to others. And the other thing is, they did a study of Big Ten at Leafs who came down with COVID-19 and had no previous cardiac issues, and they found that 50% of those people came down with myocardias, which is an elimination of the heart that can lead to cardiac arrest. So we didn't know the long-term impact this can have on even younger people. So we wouldn't, so it wouldn't be the best thing for things to shut down the government provided support from people and everyone stay home for a month or so. Um, I don't know. I think that that's about my pay grade. And if it was something I would be in charge of, you know, I would make the right decision. But um, I just don't know. I don't think anyone has the right answers. And that's the issue. No one really knows what's going on, but I guess that's uh, America in 2020. We do know what the healthcare professionals have said, but you're basically saying that you don't trust what they are saying. Um, I don't think we do know the health professionals who the health professionals are. People like yourself or people who go on Twitter and read articles all day, you know, 98% of the use is fake, so how do we know what's actually real and what we're actually supposed to do? I see people on Twitter complaining and being all upset and saying this person knows this or that, but no one actually knows what to believe. Medical professionals have also said that masks do absolutely nothing to prevent the spread of coronavirus. They have not said that in quite some time. If they have, you're arrogant. You're very arrogant for saying that they haven't said that. I think you're referring to recent Danish study. No, I'm not. I'm referring to dozens of and dozens of medical friends who say masks do absolutely nothing to stop the spread of coronavirus. Oh, come on, that's not true, though. What doctors are saying this? I'm not saying if it's, tr it's true or not. I'm not saying it's true or not. And I'm not here to have a debate with you about it. I'm just telling you what I've been told. 
So how do we know what information we're supposed to believe or not? I think the problem with this call is you're trying to make everything black or white when in 2020 everything is very gray. But you're poor and you want clickbait and you want answers so you want everything to be black or white. But in fact, it's not that. So that's where you need to open up your mind as someone who controls me controls media and influences what a lot of people read and say and brief and do. Well, you influence a lot of what people say and brief and do too, probably more than I do. No, definitely more than you do. I never even heard of you. Right. So you have responsibility too to your followers and we're just having conversation here. Usually of trying to come up with clickbait and a bunch of other stuff. But we're just talking about your thoughts on things. That's what your fanaticals reporter brain tells you, but you know the truth of that. You know what I'm saying? You're priming off of this. I'm priming off of this. Yeah, you love it. You are having the best day ever right now because of this interview. Oh, I don't know about that. to, I guess his videographer had posted video from the fight night. Um, it, it looks like Jake Paul had a watch party in his house with countless people. I really don't know. And it seemed quite packed and nobody was wearing any masks or anything like that. Marlo Stern, a senior editor with the Daily Beast, reposted the video on Twitter. Days before Paul's big fight, Stern published a conversation he had with Paul, questioning him about hosting a, a house party over the summer, despite official COVID-19 warnings against large gatherings. While Paul reportedly apologized for the party, according to the mayor of Calabasas, he told Stern more recently that he thinks the virus is a hoax. It's time for us to open up. Obviously, it's a controversial subject, but it's time for our nation to open up and uh, go back to normal. You really think so? Yeah, 100%. This is the, this is the most detrimental thing to our society. Uh, COVID cases and deaths are at less than 1%. Um, and I think, I think the disease is a hoax. In a subsequent interview with The Verge, a reporter asked Paul if he stands by his hoax claim. Paul's seemed to retract his statement, saying, no, no, COVID is very, very real. It's killed so many people. It's killed people I know. I don't even know where that came from. While Paul may have changed his tune, Stern hopes people are getting their pandemic information from more reliable sources. <laughs> Jake Paul has done something very naughty, I guess. And throughout this year, he has done something very naughty by not caring about the coronavirus pandemic. How did he at least try to care about the deadliest pandemic of all instead of caring about himself right before others? Then he wouldn't be in this mess where the media, quote unquote, paints him in a bad light. Jake Paul, you, you, Mister, are are getting a call on your stocking this year. You really need to stop doing 
things like this. Because that is not a oh oh jolly Christmas thing to do. You're on this year's naughty list, son. Don't make me see you again next year. Otherwise, you'll be there twice.